Okay, I'm live again. We're coming back from the Kingdom Hall. That was very short. They had already judged me before I went, which a lot of people here told me about. I thought I would be able to say a few things, but... Um, but there was four of them, and the first thing, so I asked if we could say a prayer, and um, they said no, because this is not a judicial meeting you have already disassociated yourself because you got baptized into another religion and I said I didn't get baptized into another religion um, I got baptized in, in the name of the Father Son and Spirit by a fellow believer and they said well it wasn't with God's one true organization that was the phrase that they kept repeating that it wasn't with God's organization um, and so there was four of them. If they had stones, they definitely would have stoned me because they were looking at me with very hateful glares. Um, one, like, totally kept interrupting. I interrupted a couple times, but I stopped myself and apologized. Anyway, um, they just kept saying that it wasn't that I that I disassociated myself. So then I said, "Well, I'm appealing your decision." And then they kept saying, "This this was not our." Your decision this was your decision and so I so I talked about you know how I got baptized as here go to the lake how I got baptized as um, is this still working is anybody on here <laughs> um, how I got baptized as a minor and I wanted to I started talking about human rights and they literally said we don't care about human rights did they say those words we don't care about human rights yeah he said we don't care about human rights um, hi everybody, hello, hello. Um, so, you know, it just kind of remind this whole charade reminds me of the expression, you know, you lose the battle, but not the war. Not that this is like a war, us versus them, like it really isn't. It's, it's about, a, you know, getting rid of things like tribalism because it's so destructive to humanity where it's us versus them. And so they kept trying to like paint me as, an unbeliever they had they had us read first corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 and that talk you could tell they only had like five scriptures prepared so they didn't want to go off topic or outline um and so it was first corinthians 1 10 which talks about here i'll just read it i'm driving and i and i do have a husband he doesn't want to be on camera but just say hello hola <laughs> anyway um First Corinthians 1.10 was like their favorite scripture, which says, Now I urge you, brothers, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you should all speak in agreement, and there should be no divisions among you, but that you may be completely united in the same mind and in the same line of thought. And then I said, okay, well, let's read the context. And we read down to verse 13, where Paul is saying, you know, thank goodness that you weren't baptized in Paul or Paulos or you know any of that and so I said yeah it's not talking about belonging to an organization here it's talking about Christ but the words didn't even penetrate them because I kept trying to show them that I agree but I mean I do agree with the scripture so that was a muddy pond and you don't know what's gonna bite you um, that was how that whole thing felt. But my husband was making a good point about, you know, it was four of them. And it's this whole, like, gang mentality. Because when we pulled into the, okay, you can't win with them. Let No, no, let me rephrase. You can win by just leaving this crazy cult. Yeah. I mean, I am celebrating my freedom. I guess I went. I, there were so many things I wanted to say, but they literally stood up and wouldn't let me keep speaking. And at the very end of the meeting, I reminded them of a dear, dear, dear brother. He had like one of those smiles that just lit up the room. He got disfellowshipped. He had a girlfriend and, you know, connect the dots and he, he got disfellowshipped. And two weeks after him being disfellowshipped, he shot himself in the head. This happened in 45 minutes from where we live. And you know, that is the collateral damage. Sorry, it's, you can leave, you can leave. Why don't you pull over because I don't know how the signal's gonna be. You can leave. And I'm like, 
but I can't leave without having my family and my friends. So that's that's not freedom. Um, to um, hello, honest, conscious, Dave. Dave, I th I love your comments so much. Thank you so much. You know, thank you a lot. Um, but do you want to just say hello? Okay, he does not want to say hello. <laughs> um, I mean, I went in there with the spirit of, of reminding myself these are victims of victims. They got caught up in the same thing I was born into, and they just really, they're obsessed with the faithful and discreet slave, like, like, obsessed. Um, but at the very end of the meeting, when they were standing over me, um, uh, I said, do you remember Ricky and, and the one elder, he was the youngest in the group. He's, he's actually my contemporary. I think he's younger than me. He is younger than me. Um, and I used to really, 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 I, well, I, I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't know him anymore. I can't say if I like him. Um, but I said, oh, as we were pulling into the Kingdom Hill parking lot, I said, oh, look, it's, it's his car. Um, I like him. Maybe, maybe there's a chance. Maybe, maybe they will actually listen from a space of nothing. Cause that's how you really listen to a person. We always have this little voice in our head, judging and critiquing everything we hear all the time, which is why it actually takes a lot of effort to be a good listener. Hello, back Chase Wolf. Um, but when you listen from a space of nothing and you're not prejudging the person speaking, then you can actually have a conversation for understanding. And it was obvious the second I walked into that room, they were not interested in anything about me. And then I asked them at one point if this was actually about shepherding. I said, you know, you all became elders because you care about the flock. And then I quoted the scripture about how there's more rejoicing in heaven over the one sheep who is... Um, lost and found than the 99 who stay and they all kind of like nodded briefly oh I'm just thinking of I wish I'd taken a picture of like how they were looking at me because it was like it was like like ugh, like they wanted to kill me um but it just all went back to how much they love their little faithful and discreet slave so shake the dust off my feet moving on um i got my husband i got my mom and i got a lot of new friends so i'm okay and if anything if you're out there right now and you're listening to this and you're disfellowshipped and you are shunned by your family think of like a child who's born into like a very dysfunctional family who didn't have like the skill set and tools to actually be parents it's kind of like people who join these high control organizations and cults lose their natural affection. Um, I mean, I still believe that there's a speck of like their true identity deep, deep down. Steven Hassan talks about it, how like the group identity overtakes your individuality and like your true self. And so that's part of like the exiting process is, is cleaning house, cleaving out the closets of like that, group think the group identity and rediscovering who you really are but what i was saying is like for for kids who are born in like abusive families and have to either be fostered out um is it fair that you have to like start your life over and build a, a new family no but guess what life isn't fair and it's okay because what doesn't kill you does make you stronger i am living proof I'm living proof that what doesn't kill you does make you stronger. I used to be such a rug that let people, oh, I'm so thankful. Okay, this is a ramble. We're, we're going to stop now. 10 minutes. We're at the lake. We're going to go have a bite to eat. And um, I did say that. Thank you, Paulette, for reminding me at the very end as they were walking out of the room and behind me, I said, you are acting like the Pharisees, right? now and father forgive you because you don't know what you're doing i mean it sounds a bit condescending or arrogant in a way because really the only person who has authority to say that is that so um ah uh, all right thanks so much um yeah when i when i said the word lawyer they all just like and they didn't care about human rights surprise surprise okay bye for now how do i get out of this how do i stop this how do I stop this? <laughs>
I honestly don't know how to stop.